hey guys Oggs from the US welcome to the channel and thank you for watching in this video I'm going to introduce Lewis Bait a 17 years old sensational kid from the Academy and he've been called in the first team because of Billy Gilmore injury we all know that uh, Billy is going to be out for at least four months but you never know what can happen it could be more than six months before we see Billy the goat back on the field again very sad but we have to move on and start thinking about the future without Billy Gilmore like I said Larry Spate is a 17 years old left-footed center midfielder at Chelsea Academy. He has a very low center of gravity, skillful, energetic, and attack-minded. His dribbling ability is out of this world, Messiesque. Lewis Bates can also play in different positions. He can play as a winger, he can also play as a force nine, a number 10 or a deep midfielder many people compare him with uh, Billy Gilmore but what I can say is that they are very different kind of players Lewis Bate is more Rubenesque than Billyest Billy Gilmore control the tempo of the game but Lewis Bate is a kind of direct attack and goal-minded midfielder they are both small physically but Lewis Bate has more muscles and is faster than Billy Gilmore it doesn't mean that he's better than Billy Gilmore like I said but they are completely different players that can complement each other now I'm gonna show you and react to few clips of Lewis bait keep in mind in the youth level you don't have those fancy close range and replace videos the video is going to give you a general idea about what kind of a player Lewis bait is and what to expect from this uh, wonder kid let's go All right, crossbar challenge. <laughs> wow, a lot of fun from the boys in the academy. <laughs> the best academy in the world. I don't care what you think. <laughs> yeah, the kids having fun. Like I said, in the youth level, it's very difficult to find like a very clear videos. Look at the pass. Wow, long range. He can also score penalties. So we don't have to worry about Jorginho and William when they are gone. <laughs> we have a lefty who can score penalties. His capacity of eliminating people, like I said, is Messiesque. Dribbling, oh my gosh. The boy got it all. His vision, you know, the general vision of the game is very good. I've watched many, many games, like the entire game from uh, Lewis Bate. So I know what I'm talking about. His passing ability, man, great. So if somebody like Frank Lampard is going to trust a 17 years old, it tells you everything you want to know. And he got an end product. We all know that Frank Lampard been talking a lot about the end product. The passing range. Look. Long passes. It's awesome. Short passing. Long passing. Everything is on point with this kid. And he's still 17. So he can only get better. Wow. Wow. The end product, goals. <laughs> we need goals. 
and I know he's only 17 he will be 18 in November if I'm not mistaken but we've seen 17 years old killing it look at uh, Ansu Fati at uh, at Barcelona he've been killing since the age of 16 so age is just a number for Frank Lampard and I love it I love Frank's attitude because you have to give a chance to a youngsters. Yeah, as you can see, dribbling, passing, long range passes, man. This boy can sweep the ball like nobody else. Anyways, guys, that was just a short clip from Lewis Bate to give you an idea about what kind of a player he is. I'm not trying to hype him here because I will get uh, a lot of comment telling me, oh, stop hyping the kid from the academy and blah, blah, blah. I, but I don't care. What do you expect me to say? You expect me to call him a flop before even the beginning of his career at Chelsea Football Club? Come on. Certain people are very negative naturally and all they do is put people down for no reason. I'm not saying that uh, Lewis Bate is going to be the next big thing, but he got potential. And we all have to start somewhere. We all were young at some point of our lives, and all we need sometimes is a chance. Good for me, uh, two wins and... I uh, know man of the match and my Premier League full debut was uh, it's amazing size, but we played really well today. And it was a good game, so three points and we keep looking forward. Well, you need to trust in yourself and your own ability on the ball, uh, that's first. Uh, and then you have to start thinking about the game. So when you're going to the game feeling confident and exciting, uh, you just need to keep it moving, keep it simple. And then when you start to settle into the game, and then you can start hitting the longer passes or try to play more forward passes or shooting. But no, uh, it's been really good, so it has, and I've enjoyed it. First Premier League start as well, what was it like for you? Yeah, it was amazing. Dream come true to uh, make my full debut in the Premier League, uh, but most of all getting the three points and carrying on winning, uh, and hopefully we continue that in the way forward. When did you find out you were starting today? Uh, this morning, just before the game, we do a meeting and get told the team, so yeah. <laughs> was he nervous? He knew before the game. <laughs> yeah, the day before the game. Oh, okay, nah, fair but enough. Yeah, no, no, he, uh, he's done very well again today and uh, um, he's got already uh, for 18, 19, 18, 18 years old, uh, yeah, young player, you know, uh, he's got a great maturity and um, he's also listening to the advice. Incredible, incredible couple of weeks for young Billy Gilmore, 18 years old. Uh, Liam Toomey of The Athletic says first Premier League uh, starts are not supposed to look this composed. Gilmore completed 74 of his 80 attempted passes, more than anyone else on the pitch. Uh, many of them were short and simple and a good number were forward. Every one of them helped Chelsea move the ball with pace, precision, purpose around Everton's half-hearted press uh, and into their front three. I was at Stamford Bridge. He, I, I'm blown away by him. Blown away yeah. by him. He, look, he looked like Paul Scholes with brown hair. <laughs> He was extraordinary, and I think you nailed it, really, that um, willingness to show for the ball, the willingness to make stuff happen. And I mean, you heard him talking about it there in his, his interview. The confidence, and it's absolutely what they needed with no Kovacic, mm. with no Jorginho. You know, there was a, a big question, a big hole, really, to, to fill, and, and he absolutely managed to do that. Mm. And I think it's very interesting how Lampard's kind of kept this second wave of kids mm. for... The closing stanza of the season. It's really interesting to see how it's working. Uh, well, on those kids, at the end, at full time, there were, and we'll go back to Billy Gilmore, but just to, to pick up on Andy's point, three 18 year olds yeah. uh, on the pitch. I'm going to have to even look through my notes to see <laughs> the other ones' names because I can't remember them. It was Brozier and Angerin, uh, both 18 as well, both from, come through the academy. Of course, Billy Gilmore came from Rangers and then came through Chelsea's academy. But he's used 11 academy graduates since he took Great. over. It's fantastic. Given them it's in terms amazing. of Premier League minutes. Yeah, and fair play to him. You know, it's absolutely brilliant to do that. And uh, Especially at a club like Chelsea, um, mm. where although obviously we know Frank Lampard's sort of status at the club buys him sometimes, especially with the supporters, not necessarily with the club itself. Um, transfer ban obviously was an issue, but he want, I think to be fair to Frank, he wanted to do this anyway. Mm. I think that was always his plan to do this. And to be fair to Chelsea, I think they want to do it as well. I think they finally feel 
there's a group of players here, <coughs> excuse me, who are good enough to actually do that and come through. They've tried to do it in the past, it hasn't worked. Not, not necessarily because the players aren't good enough, some of them maybe weren't good enough, but because they didn't have the patience. And the manager pays the price and goes. And even Conte, you know, I remember somebody said to me uh, a while ago at Chelsea, Loftus-Cheek was always the best player in training, mm. always the best player. But come match day, Conte will say, yeah, but, you know, can I really put him in because what happens if it doesn't? And that was always the issue at Chelsea because, you know, they talk a good game about bringing through young players and giving them a chance, but there was always that, you've got to win. Mm -hmm. You've got to win because mm. if you don't win, two, two, two defeats is a crisis. Mm. That's changed slightly, with, it's changed quite dramatically, actually, this season. I think Frank was under quite a bit of pressure a couple of weeks ago. I think it was looking, you're starting to look at it and thinking, like, well, where is this heading? And he was bringing in the older players back, wasn't he? And you're thinking, mm. like, hang on a minute, there aren't any kids on the pitch anymore. There's only maybe, yeah. you know, maybe Tammy Abraham or Mason Mount, and that was about it. But actually, you know, again, necessity has brought this about partly through injuries and suspension. Gilmore's, just going back to Gilmore, yeah. what I like about Gilmore is he's such an unusual British player. Yeah. We just don't really have players like this. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like a player that... England would cry out for Scotland. I'm Scottish, actually, and they can't tell by the accent. <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking, like, when did we last have a player like that playing yeah. for Scotland? Well, look at Scotland's options: McTominay and Gilmore I know. And suddenly, Gilles, it's, it's look, looking an awful yeah, exactly. Suddenly, <laughs> looking fantastic for Scotland. But I mean, how England would cry out for for, for a player like that as well? Because yeah. you know, if you Gareth Southgate, obviously, I know, obviously, uh, Steve Clark will will bring him. He's in the 21s at the moment. They'll they'll bring him through. But you're looking at me. I mean, he would he would be fast tracked in the England squad. He He's really the first would. Scottish player to play for Chelsea since Steve Clark. Okay, all right. Yeah, nice so, but, but because of that that profile of player, it's so rare in the English game, in the British game. It's yeah. just. It's unusual. Really, it's really interesting, I think. It's a sign of how the Premier League's moved on as well. Mm. Because a guy like that doesn't get the chance to play in the centre of midfield, I reckon, 10, 12 years ago in yeah, the Premier yeah. League. No, I agree. And there's, there's a different perception of what a Premier League midfielder can be and it's guys mm. like David Silva, Luka Modric who've who've changed all that and paved the way for him to be there. Yeah, and, we, and look for those watching.